One. Welcome into Coach's Corner, Jordan Woodruff with you, and great to have you along for this episode. And this is a good episode because I'm joined by somebody that, uh, well, I've got to know well since uh, taking the job doing play-by-play -play from Ponca, uh, and uh, she is now the head basketball coach for the girls team after Jody Fincher left for uh, being principal at Liberty Elementary. Micah Estrada with us. And first off, congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Yeah, I, it has to be awesome. And I just kind of want to go through. I mean, you were a standout ball player for Ponca City, made the state team back in 2010. Uh, you, go to, you go to college, you get your psychology degree, you come back, and uh, you end up being the junior high coach. Then you get promoted to assistant, and now you're the head coach. I mean... Did you dream about this? Is this how it was planned? I mean, this is just really cool for somebody from Ponca City to go through the ranks like this. Actually, I did not have intentions to coach when I first started out. I actually started with owning my own business mm -hmm. and came back to Ponca and wanted to somewhat get into basketball. So I was going to volunteer for seventh grade. And the coach at the time said, why don't you do eighth grade? And then the rest is history. I just shut down my business to coach more and... Fell in love with it. Yeah, I, I mean, usually people that coach think they 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 kind of have an idea. I would like to do it. So was it just one of those things that it was there? You wanted to do it and thought I'll try this, and all of a sudden it turned into this. Yeah, exactly. I just fell in love with it as I got started with it, and never wanted to leave after that. Well, what makes you love it so much? The connections with the girls, those relationships you build, um, that competition feeling. That's just something that with sports you. I don't think you can recreate, um, but mainly those relationships and the stuff you get to build with the girls and your other coaching staff and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and to coach now where you play, I mean, I talked to Jacob last week about this. That's a cool feeling. Yes, definitely. So I've always loved Ponca City, um, so that was kind of, in the last few years, something I started to kind of think about, and I once I got it, I was like, that is the coolest thing to be able to say, I've been in your shoes, I know where you were, I was in this exact same spot not too long ago. Well, and so. I think it's pretty cool, too, because I look at Jacob now, he hasn't maybe been here as long as you have in Ponca City, but he's a former Ponca grad as well. Have you guys talked to each other, and have you has it kind of dawned on you, this is pretty a cool experience, and now... Maybe you can share with each other the frustrations, the challenges, and, and really, in a way, you can mentor each other even though you're kind of in the same boat. Yeah, it's been, it's definitely interesting. You don't hear about that happening very much at different schools. So we've definitely kind of gone back and forth off each other about different ideas and things like that. So it is a neat opportunity we've gotten. Yeah, and I mean, on top of this, I remember uh, over the last season, you welcomed a baby into the world as yes. well. And I thought it was so weird not seeing you on the sidelines and sitting behind the bench with this. Uh, and it seemed like the family was there really helping you take care of the baby, which you got back to the bench as quick as you could, though, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. That was a hard time to not be able to be there. So I would try to drive to some of the games, and I was always at all the home games. So, but it was it was rough not being able to be there. How, how's the baby doing? He's doing good. Almost five months old. Wow. Yeah. So keeping you up at night? Oh, no. He sleeps good. That's He's, good yes, to hear. So I get lots of sleep. So, <laughs> so is it your fur? Yes. I have an 11-year-old, but it's my right, first Right, your fur, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that's special. So it's just really cool this uh, seeing that. And that was kind of a story when it, itself this year. But uh, now Coach Fincher's stepping down. I know you have a lot of respect. Appreciate what Coach Fincher's done for you. But – it's kind of going to be interesting that you're sitting in that chair next to him, and now you're moving over six inches, but it's almost a whole world away. Yes, yeah. One weird thing is when it, he moved out of the office, like the chair was there in the office, and it took me a little while to actually be able to move over there and sit in that chair, so I have a feeling it'll probably be like that come season two with moving around on the bench and whatnot. Well, and I mean, let's be <laughs> honest. It was a boy's office, everybody, and uh, <laughs> Micah had to struggle through that. <laughs> with uh, all them, and including Coach Fincher. So I'm sure that office is, uh, especially now, you're going to keep that thing probably tidy, looking good, right? Yes, yeah. We already had all the girls move their stuff out so we can get a good clean. I've moved <laughs> some furniture out of the office already. So, yeah, it's going to be quite a bit more organized and neat. <laughs> Sorry, Coach Fincher. We're still going to put it <laughs> yeah. on you when we can. So, But that's kind of the next thing leading into it is you – have your own ideas of how the game should be played. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can be an assistant under somebody for 10, 20 years, but you have your own ideas of what you're going to do. So 
I know you're going to keep a lot of what's been successful under Coach Fincher, but is there going to be any little small intricacies you change to fit more of your style of game? Yeah, we're going to make it an easy transition as far as moving from one type to the next. Uh, and it'll be several similarities, uh, very uh, disciplined, uh, fundamental type of ball. We're going to really, really focus on the fundamentals um, because in Ponca City, that's kind of what you have to do, playing against some of those D1 athletes that we play against every night. Um, so we're going to really focus on that, um, being really disciplined, uh, and hopefully will be fun to watch. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting, and we talk about this, it's so tough. You think about the conference that you're now in, and you think about playing other 6A schools. It's been a challenge for a lot of programs to have success, but the girls' basketball program has had a lot of success over the past little over a decade, even back when you were playing, as far as consistently making that state tournament. So... Uh, it, it's always interesting to look at now that you're taking over, how do you bring in new stuff but also keep some of the same tradition? Yeah, it's just you keep talking to the girls about what's been accomplished in Ponca City um, and hope that they want that for themselves. And this year we do have a good group of girls that still really want that for themselves um, and for the team. So you just keep preaching that and you keep talking all the stuff that you need them to get done. And over the years, the groups of girls have always stepped up and yeah. risen to the occasions. Well, we talked to Jacob uh, about this, and I think it's the same for you. You have been here for so long. You know the junior high girls, the freshman girls, you know the varsity girls. How much easier it is, is it when you're at a place like this and then you move up to the head coach because you have those relationships already established? Does it make it maybe easier in the transition? Oh, definitely, yeah, because you already know those little things that are going to motivate your girls, the things that are going to um, not get them to perform well where they need to perform. Uh, so definitely it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about next year a little bit now. I mean, uh, this was a team that, I mean, it could have very well made state last year. Um, you were coming back, and what a great rally after Emma Gherkin got hurt in that game for the girls to really step up. Just didn't seem like they had the gas in the tank at the end, especially after the blow with Emma being out. But uh, you got a lot of that team, well, for the most part, all of them, but Emma pretty much, that are going to be back, including somebody that we can really build around, which is Kara Allison. Yeah, we've got, we'll have four seniors this year. Uh, Kira Allison, Sarah Dingus, Calissa Collins, and Lainey George, they all got have gotten significant minutes in the last few years. A lot of them have been starting since they were freshmen, yes, too. Yes, yeah. So we will be a more experienced team than what we've been in the past. So it's exciting going forward with that. Yeah, and the freshman team did great this year. So yes. you got some good girls that are going to be coming up making an impact, too, and those younger ones. Yes, definitely. Uh, there's several of them that we'll have back um, that already have learned kind of somewhat the system that we're going to go towards um so it'll just be again that kind of easier transition to even build on that farther. yeah and you know it's interesting with coach venture he really wanted to play man-to-man -man, but you as a coach as you well aware because you are a coach you have to adjust based on the personnel that you have and put them in the best position to win so let's talk you talk about some of the transition to maybe some of the newer stuff what is the ideal Micah Estrada basketball. Like, if you could just have basketball your way, how would you want to play the game? Um, fundamental is the biggest thing. I like watching a fundamental game when the girls are doing what they're supposed to. Um, we are going to really focus on defense. And one thing I do want to do is play more man when we're able. Um, it might be a little ways down the road to learn those, like, very fundamental man principles and things. Um, but fundamental, uh, very, very... Uh, eager to like go after the ball, things like that. Uh, just. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. In, in this summer, or what's the plan? I know there's restrictions of being able to be in the gym so much and everything, but for a new coach, I imagine that summer camps or something like that could be very important, right? Yes, and we're going to several. Uh, we're taking our 7th and 8th grade to some, ninth grade, JV to certain ones, and then our varsity. So everybody will be geared up to go different places and get as much work in as we can over the summer. And how important is that to you, being the head coach now, being able to see how those girls... Because 
it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of girls coming back. Every team gels differently each year. You could have everybody coming back, and that year is different just based on where those kids are at. So how important is that summertime to really be able to analyze and at least get a little glimpse into what you have coming in the fall? It's extremely important. That's one thing I've told my staff so far. I've texted them and said, hey, here's the dates of when we're going. It's not something that I'm going to say you have to go to, but I will tell you it's extremely beneficial to you, to your team because of that exact reason. You've got to learn the quirks of all the girls, what's going to work, what's not going to work, things like that. Yeah, and I think a coach venture, and he was a very hard personality at times, right? Yeah. It was almost a good cop, bad cop at mm-hmm. times, right? Yes. Where you you guys would uh, kind of say, hey, it's okay, he's trying to teach you and everything. So now that you're going to the head coaching role, is there going to be an adjustment in your personality since it is on you? Or are you you're going to have to find yourself maybe being a little bit harder, trying to get them more more out of them. Like, how are you going to adjust personality-wise? Yeah, and I have already talked to the girls a little bit kind of about this. But, yeah, we'll have to kind of – it's not going to always be – when they're upset or something like that. Sometimes I can't be that person, but we've got good people that'll kind of step up and go into that role. And I'm always gonna be, my my goal is to be open and upfront with them so they can still come and talk to me when they need to. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'll be a difference. <laughs> now, one thing, uh, the referees around the state may be happy because uh, <laughs> uh, Coach Fincher was known to get on them pretty good. So uh, now working the officials is part of the game. Yes. but. How do you see yourself as far as that aspect? Are you going to be a little bit calmer when it comes to the officials? <laughs> Probably a little bit. <laughs> uh, I've learned uh, as I was growing up playing and stuff, one thing I'd always do is just kind of talk Pop. to the refs and things like that and uh, like a friendly approach and seem to have good results as a player and when I was coaching uh, those say, junior high teams. So I'll probably do a lot of that, of course things are going to happen where it might get a little heated and things like that. But yeah, I'll probably be a little calmer on the bench. But because it's funny to me because, I mean, I can't think of Ponca girls basketball without Coach Fincher getting the technical, even when it's not warranted. Like, he, yes. he just had their reputation. It's like those refs were quick on the trigger, yes, right? They were. So I, it's kind of interesting because I just don't see you getting a technical foul, but I figure it's probably coming somewhere down the line. Have you ever had a technical foul in your not, playing career? No. Oh, no, 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 not in my playing career. So you career. never I coaching? was the one that would get in between the people that was were wanting a technical to pull them off of that. So. <laughs> that, that's funny. So you've never had one? No, I have not. <laughs> so, I can't wait. Dude, yeah. That's great information for me in the future. <laughs> yeah. So, which I know that uh, you're better off not getting those yes. and everything goes well, but uh, I just thought that was kind of funny when I was thinking about it. Now, did you get a lot of tech? Uh, from the girls when this announcement was made. And then I know uh, things uh, get approved and everything like that, but Coach Fincher knew he was stepping down for a while. So when did this ball get moving, and when did you really feel like he had a good chance to be the head coach? Um, it The ball didn't start moving until after they had hired on the boys' side. Um, so it was a little bit – it was a little uh, antsy getting to that point. Um, but I there was not really a point that I knew – I was going to get the job or anything like that. I just was hoping and getting prepared and well, to you, do anything I could do to get it. Of course you apply. You have to go through all the legal stuff and applications with a school. But um, when you applied, did you feel like, I never got a really good shot at this? Or was it one of those things where it's like, I don't know, maybe they want to go a different... Like, So how was your feeling when you applied? <sighs> it was pretty 50-50. I didn't yeah. want to get my hopes up. Um, but like I said, I was going to do whatever I could to do my best to get the job, but without getting my hopes up. So. so when you got the call saying you got the job, what was that like? I was really excited. So it all of a sudden kind of became a little surreal, like, oh, this is what I've been wanting for the last, especially a few months since I had started kind of the process of getting there and whatnot. So, so when did you realize your head coach at junior high, your assistant, but when did you realize that you could be a head coach of a 6A program? Probably just maybe in the last couple years. Um, kind of getting involved a little bit more with the varsity team um, and seeing, hey, I, I think I could probably do this. So, and just believing in myself, kind of, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> you being from Ponca City, too. I mean, your girls, I'm sure former coaches, Coach Fincher, everybody in athletics. What was it like when the announcement came? your phone I mean was it just blowing up yeah I looked down at one time because I was it was the day that it came out I was in school 
And so I looked down like during a, a, a passing period, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" So you it found out what, you found out where everybody else did. No, I found out, um, but then I didn't act, tell really right. anybody until it was announced on the Facebook page. And so that was when I was at school, and I didn't even know it had been announced on the Facebook page at that point. And so I was like, "Oh, but I guess it's out now." <laughs> so. What was the response from the girls? Um, they were excited. So uh, talking about how it will be a little bit different because I won't be able to be that. <laughs> person right. um but we'll adjust they they do a really good job of adjusting so it'll yeah. all be good what um last thing for you here what challenges are you going to try to tackle right off the bat so like and this can be personal this can be with the team so what do you feel like are some of the challenges that you're going to have to work on right away um just making sure we have a good strong team base so we are going to preach family, preach team building, um, do a lot of team building activity type things, um, and just making sure that our base within our team is extremely strong. So that's my main focus starting out going into the summer. Um, and then right after that, just really drilling the fundamentals in, making sure we're playing very, very fundamental uh, basketball. Yeah, so... New girls basketball coach. I couldn't be happier, too. I love the fact that Jacob's the same way. It's people that I've got to know a little bit and love seeing that uh, you guys are promoted to the head coaching job and can't wait to see the future now. And uh, once again, girls basketball left in great hands after what Coach Jody Fincher and the success he was able to have, which you're part of that staff. So, Micah, appreciate your time. Congratulations. I cannot wait to call that game come probably end of November next year. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Mike Estrada, new girls basketball coach. That's going to do it for today's Coach's Corner. Jordan Woodruff saying so long. Until next time, go Cats.